we said at the end of the previous unit, the Muqattam story can be interpreted as an expression of the firm belief of the Coptic community that their own religion is more powerful than other religions. But it can also be interpreted from a different angle. So, what kind of angle are we talking about? What we are talking about here is a contextualizing approach. The study of a given phenomenon, in this case a miracle story, within its own specific historical and cultural context. In order to explain this context, let's have a closer look at three of the main characters in the story. These three men clearly represent the three main communities in the society of Fatimid Cairo. The Caliph and Moiz, the Vizier Yaqub ibn Kellis, and the Patriarch Afraham. Let's start with the Caliph and Moiz. As you may remember, he belonged to the Fatimid dynasty. And that is a very important detail for the interpretation of the story. Why? First of all, Al Mu'izz was one of the more remarkable caliphs in the history of the Fatimids. This dynasty had been founded further west in North Africa. And from there, Al Mu'izz, the fourth Fatimid caliph, succeeded in conquering Egypt in 969. What is so important about this conquest is that very soon afterwards he founded a new capital in Egypt. Its name was Al Qahira, which means literally the victorious. And in other languages, such as English, this city later became known as Cairo. Thus, Al Mu'izz is still remembered today as nothing less than the founder of Cairo. Incidentally, the name Al Qahira is also believed to refer to the planet Mars, in Arabic Al Qahir. On the day of the official foundation of the city, this planet was rising, as the court astrologers pointed out. If this interpretation is correct, it once more illustrates the relevance of astrology in medieval Arabic and Islamic culture, as explained earlier on in this course. The Fatimid Caliph Al Mu'izz had this new capital built just outside what already had long been the biggest urban agglomeration in the Middle East. This included the ancient city of El Fustat, built immediately after the Arab conquest of Egypt in the 7th century. The population of this area was mixed. There were not only Muslims but also Jews and Christians, as our narrative clearly illustrates. And now we are getting at why the Fatimid context is so important for the Muqatta miracle account. Most specialists agree that precisely in this period of Egyptian history, these non-Muslim communities flourished, that Jews and Christians were part and parcel of the human landscape in Cairo and elsewhere, and that relations between the different communities were cordial or at least peaceful most of the time, with some exceptions that we'll talk about later in the next video. Some Jews and Christians held very prominent positions in these societies, even within government circles. This last point is one that most specialists consider particularly characteristic of the Fatimid period. To understand this, we should realize that although the Fatimid rulers held political and military power, they actually belonged to a minority in terms of numbers. They adhered to Ismailism, a branch of Shia Islam mentioned earlier on in this course. Many of their subjects were Coptic Christians and those who were Muslims followed Sunni Islam. These Sunni Muslims greatly outnumbered the relatively small ruling class of Ismailis. As a result, the reputed tolerance of the Fatimid rulers towards the Christians as well as the Jews is explained by some scholars as pure pragmatism. To effectively control the sizable Sunni population of Egypt, the Fatimid system as a kind of minority rule needed to incorporate the elite of the non-Muslim communities. Other scholars, however, argue that this Fatimid tolerance often extended to Sunni Islam as well, and that it is actually one of the ideological tenets of Ismailism itself. According to some, the early Ismailis had found their inspiration for this principle in the epistles of the Brethren of Purity, the Ikhwan Safa, 
whom we have encountered several times already in this course. Whatever the case may be, research on the position of Jews and Christians under the Fatimids is still ongoing. But an important step forward is a recent collective publication entitled Non-Muslim Communities in Fatimid Egypt, 10th to 12th centuries CE. This brings us to the second main character in the miracle story. The Jewish segment of Fatimid society is represented there by two people, the vizier Jacob ibn Kilis and his Jewish friend. But let's shift our attention to the third character, the real protagonist in the story. Although here again we are actually talking about two persons who represent the Coptic community itself, the patriarch or Pope Abraham, and the modest and simple tenor who is instrumental in performing the miracle and who would later be canonized as a saint by the Coptic Church. In the story, this man remains more or less in the background, and it's mostly the patriarch who represents the Coptic Church as an institution. By now, you already know a few things about this institution and about the Coptic community. One more thing, though, is important right now. The Fatimid period was also a crucial period in the change of language from Coptic to Arabic that we briefly sketched in the general introduction. We'll come back to this issue in the next unit, where we will talk about the main source, the main text in which the miracle story was written down. Before leaving you, for now, let's get by to the question raised at the beginning of this unit and try to interpret the Muqattam story against the background of Fatimid society. In this slide, the story still asserts an indisputed attachment to the Coptic Christian identity of its author and its public. But it does so within the context of loyalty to the Fatimid court. Once the Caliph acknowledges the miracle, he once again becomes the good guy and favours the Copts and their patriarch, who clearly and explicitly expresses his allegiance to him. At the same time, the story also showed that the Copts actually deserve the favourable treatment they received in the end. So, this is another very important aspect of the Muqattam miracle story, which is still so much alive today and which gave Father Samaran a unique background for building the modern Muqattam site.